A very good afternoon to our viewers and a very warm welcome back to Home Study, your favorite tele-education program. It's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I'm hoping that you guys are geared up and ready for another day of learning. My name is Nogwazi Jamini. This is what your timetable looks like today. From 2 p.m. until 2.30 p.m., we have the Grade 1 and 2 Expressive Art lesson. From 2.30 p.m. until 3 p.m., we have Grade 3 and 4 Science. From 3 p.m. until 3.30 p.m., we have Mathematics for Grade 3 and 4. From 3.30 p.m. until 4 p.m., we have Siswati for the Form 1s and the Form 2s. From 4 p.m. until 4.30 p.m., we have Biology for the Form 4s. And the last subject for the day is RE for the Form 4s from 4.30 p.m. until 5 p.m. And of course, to remind you that we are live right now on YouTube and on Facebook. You guys can join us on those platforms, of course. And to use the WhatsApp number on your screens to WhatsApp ask any questions that you might have. Now, like as I had said before, our first lesson is the Grade 1 and the Grade 2 Expressive Arts lesson with Nonshanta Manana, who is already with me in the studio. Also joining me in the studio is our scientist language interpreter Nomtlebo Lamini. How are you doing today, teacher Mana? I'm fine, no, as how are you, my dear? I'm doing very well. Is it okay if I call you teacher Mana? Yes, All right. it's, okay. it's okay. okay. All right, today we're doing, uh, our topic is the day Kala came home, right? True. So what are you expecting your grade one and your grade twos to have learned by the end of this lesson? Okay. By the end of the lesson, um, the grade ones should be able to identify primary colors that is red, yellow, and blue. They should also be able to change colors by mixing other colors. Okay, all right, grade ones and grade twos, I hope that you are ready for your lesson. It sounds like it's going to be fun. We all love color, don't we? All right, you may please begin with your lesson, teacher Manana. Thank you. Good afternoon, my grade ones and twos at home. As we have said that today, our today's topic is the day color came home but before we go to today's topic i want us to just go back and talk about what we did last time in our last topic we talked about a puppet it was from recycled materials which recycled material did we use which recycled material did we use oh yes we used an old sock Please, my dear Lena, an old sock. Don't use the new ones. Okay? And which puppet animals did we use when we were telling our story? Yes, there was the rabbit and the monkey. Okay? I hope you were able to make your own puppet choosing from page 18 of your workbook. So today... Please bring with you your learner's workbook, the three primary colors, that is powder paint of the three primary colors, that is red, yellow, and blue. Also bring with you mixing trays. Remember, we don't buy in art. We always collect what has been used so you can even use what teacher has used there you can use um those are empty danone containers also bring your paint brushes a bottle of water a three teaspoons and a, a paper Yes, Noah, do you want to say something? Yes, I do want to say something. Can we please take a bit of a breather? Our viewers at home, we will be right back after this.
Welcome back to Home Study. We are continuing with the grade one and the grade uh, grade ones and two's expressive art lesson with te teacher Nontlanta Manana. You may please continue with your lesson, ma'am. Yeah, welcome back, my grade one and twos. Um, we are still continuing with our lesson. Okay, before we start today's lesson, I want us to sing. The song says, my name is water. I know that you remember the song from preschool. The song says, my name is water. I have no color. Okay, let us sing together. One, two, three, start. My name is water. I have no color. You color me yellow, I'll be yellow. You color me blue, I'll be blue. You color me orange, I'll be orange. You but don't color me red, because I will be blood. Can we sing it again, please? My name is water. I have no color. Color me yellow, I'll be yellow. Color me blue, I'll be blue. Color me green, I'll be green. Color me orange, I'll be orange. But don't color me red, because I will be blood. Very good. So today we are talking about colors. We are talking about colors, yes. Uh, can you look around yourselves, go to your wardrobes, look around yourself, tell me the colors of the clothes that you are wearing. Can, tell me the colors of the clothes that you are wearing. Oh, some are saying that they have red clothes, blue, yellow, green, pink, purple, orange and a lot of other colors okay that's very good can you clear pens for yourselves and that is beautiful so today we are going to talk about two groups of colors we are going to talk about two groups of colors we have primary colors and secondary colors we have primary colors and secondary colors what are primary colors what are primary colors i know you still remember at preschool you used to call these primary these uh, colors the basic colors so what are the basic colors the primary colors are the colors that we can can be mixed together to get another color. Primary colors are the colors that can be mixed together to get another color. Those colors are red, yellow, and blue. Okay. Look at the picture there. It shows a gift bag. And what color is the gift bag? It is red. The gift bag is Red. Good. Can you identify anything red around you? Oh, good. Let's look at the other picture there. It's a picture of a flower. What color is the flower? What color is the flower? It is yellow. The flower is yellow. Look around yourselves. Can you identify anything that is yellow? Oh, I can hear someone saying, my t-shirt is yellow. Woo, my shorts are yellow. That is very good. Okay. What is that? It's wool. I know you remember wool from our last lesson when we were making the puppet. We used wool. What color is our wool? Oh, yes. The wool is Blue. The wool is blue. Very good. So we said we are going to talk about two groups of uh, two groups of colors. We said they are primary colors and they are secondary colors. What are secondary colors? What are secondary colors? 
Secondary colors are produced when two primary colors are mixed together equally. When two primary colors are mixed together equally. So now I want us to see how we get the secondary colors. And at the end, you are going to tell me we, what are the secondary colors. I'm not going to tell you, but we are going to mix together the primary colors and see the colors that comes out. Okay? So get ready with your material. But remember that when we are doing our experiment, you must remember to prepare your station using a newspaper or a cloth. Do not eat or taste, my friend. Do not eat or taste the mixtures. Be careful not to splash the paint on your cells. When you are done, remember to tidy up and wash your hands with running water and soap and also wash the brushes and keep them safe all right now we are going to see how we can we are going to make uh, the secondary colors and you are going to do it with me um, as we mix the primary colors and the secondary and then the two primary colors equally remember we said we mix them equally so that we get the correct color. Okay? Ready? Are you prepared now? Make sure you cover your workstation as I've said. Cover your workstation so that you don't splash the paint on the table or whatever you are using. And you don't splash the paint on yourself. Please... Do not eat or taste. Do not eat or taste. Whatever you are going to mix there. Please, okay. Collect everything. Go and ask for the spoons from your mom's. Three teaspoons. Okay, now we are mixing. You are going to take a teaspoon of red paint a teaspoon make sure it's a teaspoon not a heaped one teaspoon of a red paint put it in the mixing tray there and then you add another teaspoon of blue paint a teaspoon of blue paint put it in the same tray Put it in the same tray there. Add some water. Add some water. And you stir your two colors together. Stir your two colors together thoroughly until they mix. Stir them together. Stir them together. Okay, stir them together. Stay until it mix very well, okay? Then we are going to see which color we are going to get from there. Mix your colors together very well. You mix them. Then let's see which color did we get. Let's see which color did we get. Let's see which color did we get oh we got the color purple we got the color purple now take another teaspoon of yellow paint a teaspoon of yellow paint okay we're going to start with blue never mind going to start with blue and a teaspoon of yellow paint yeah mix it put it in the in your mixing tray then you add some water add some water then you stay add some water add some water there 
you stir your mixture together thoroughly make sure it's well mixed so that you get the color that you want you mix it very well mix it there we've mixed the color blue and the yellow and we want to see which color we are going to get okay now let's see which color did we get it's the color green Woo, wow we got the color green now let us see the next one now we're going to add another teaspoon of the color yellow color yellow put it in the mixing tray then the color red red in your mixing tray put some water and you stay your mixture together you stay your mixture together stay your mixture together yes stay your mixture together please until it is well mixed so that we get the color that we want let us see what color did we get oh color orange we got the color orange we got the color orange very good so those are the uh, secondary colors we have green we have purple and orange good let's look at the picture now look at the picture there what is that oh it's a rainbow it's a rainbow where have you seen the rainbow where have you seen a rainbow oh yes in the sky after the rain oh very good now let us name the colors of the rainbow together let us name the colors of the rainbow yes we have the color red we have the color orange we have the color yellow we have the color green and we have the color blue we have the color purple those are the rainbow colors do you recognize any primary colors from the rainbow oh yes they are primary colors there let us see the primary colors we have the color red yes we have the color yellow and we have the color blue those are our primary colors what about the secondary colors do you see any secondary colors there oh yes we have the color orange we have the color green and we have the color purple that is very good my friend now i want us to to sing the rainbow song do you know a rainbow song so we are going to sing a rainbow song together please stand up stand up stand up stand up everybody stand up we are going to sing now and get ready for our song stand up great one and two stand up we are going to sing our rainbow song okay good my friends i saw you singing loud over there the beautiful rainbow in the sky okay now can you please take your workbooks go to page 51 go to page 51 uh, there is a picture of a rainbow there so please take your crayons you are going to color the rainbow using the colors that we have learned about you are going to use the primary colors and the secondary colors very good so we have come to the end of our today's lesson i hope you enjoyed today's lesson but can you please remind me the three primary colors 
Remind me the three primary colors. Oh, red, yellow, and blue. Okay, which color did we get when we were mixing the color red and the color blue? Oh, we got color purple. We got color purple. You must go outside and collect purple flowers. I know you're going to see them. Okay, what about the what about the two colors, yellow and blue? We got color green. Yes. What about red and yellow? We got the color orange. Woo! You guys are very good. Okay, so we have come to the end of our today's lesson. I hope you really, really enjoy it. Until we meet again next time, same place. I love you so much, Great One and Two. Bye. Thank you so much, Teacher Nantlantla, for your lovely, lovely lesson on colors. We're hoping your grade ones and grade twos enjoyed it, and we'll, we'll be seeing you soon. For sure. Thank you so much. Grade three and grade four, please get ready and get closer to your, the screens, because right after this break is the science uh, lesson with Mr. Banele Lamini. We will be right back after this.
to Home Study live on Eswatini TV. My name is Nogwa Zilamini. A very good afternoon to you if you have just joined us. Right now it's the grade 3 and the grade 4's turn to do science with Mr. Banele Lamini who is already with me in the studio. Also joining me in the studio is our sign language interpreter Nombumelelo Hatebe. How are you doing today sir? I'm good. Nogwa how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Today we're doing diseases. Yes, we are doing diseases. Okay, what are you expecting your grade 3s and grade 4s to have learned by the end of this lesson? I'm expecting my learners to be able to identify common diseases among children mm -hmm. such as influenza, measles, belhiza, epilepsy and chickenpox. Okay. They should also classify method by which other diseases are transmitted such as airborne like tuberculosis, mm -hmm. waterborne like cholera and dysentery and also insects transmitted diseases such as malaria. They should also state some signs and symptoms of TB, cholera and malaria and also describe preventative method of the diseases. All right, okay. It sounds like a very interesting it's, uh, lesson it's going to be and very informative too. Grade 3s and Grade 4s, I hope that you are going to enjoy that lesson. And of course, to remind, uh, to remind you, Grade 3 and Grade 4, that we are live right now on YouTube and on Facebook. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the WhatsApp number on your screens. So you may please begin with your lesson. Okay, thank you, Novas. Okay, let us start at looking at the reason why we should learn about diseases. There are many diseases which affect people. It is important to know the signs and symptoms of different diseases and to be able to protect, to protect ourselves from being infected by the diseases. Now we will first look at common, the common cold. The common cold is also called a cold. It is caused by a virus. It attacks the moist tissues of the nose, mouth or also the throat. These are the symptoms of the common cold. It may cause a runny nose, meaning that there are some fluid coming out of the nose. A sore throat, meaning that your sore, your throat may become painful or even a cough. It is transmitted from an inf infected person through air since it is an airborne disease. It is also transmitted by touching objects which the infected person has come in contact, meaning that the infected person has also touched that object. And then touching, after you have touched that infected object, you touch your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. By that way, the disease can come into your body. These are the ways of preventing a common cold. You should stay away from people who cough or sneeze. You should also wash, wash your hands regularly, meaning that you should wash your hands many times. You should also control your stress level and drink enough water and other fluids such as herbal tea. You should also exercise your body and eat enough fruits and vegetables. Why should you eat enough fruits and vegetables? Because these are foods that protect the body. Now let's look at the other disease which is common in, in children, the influenza. This is an infectious disease which is caused by an influenza virus. It attacks the respiratory system which is the nose, the throat and the lungs. These are the symptoms of the influenza. How do you see that you are suffering? from influenza. It can be mild to severe, meaning that it seems like the common cold. You, should, you have some sore throat, runny nose, bad cough, fever, muscle, muscle joint pain, meaning that the joints are painful. 
even the body ashes and develop some sores. You suffer from headache, feeling tired even if you have done nothing, and a nasal congestion. It is, it is called from an infected person to another through air because it is also what? Airborne. By touching objects, the infected person come into contact with. How to prevent influenza? You should avoid being in crowded places because in crowded places, infections are very high. You should also wash your hands often. Why? Because you use your hands to touch many objects. Now let's come to Belhaiza. This is a disease caused by a specific parasitic flatworms that live in fresh water. A person can get it a person can get it when she comes in contact with the contaminated water, meaning that dirty water or even drinking the water. It is common amongst children because they are more likely to play in contaminated water. It damages the intestines, the bladder and other organs, other parts of the body. These are the symptoms of Belhaiza. There is blood in urine. There is diarrhea, a running stomach. There is also a rash and abdominal pain. And also fever and cough. And you should know that people who have been infected for a long time without treatment may develop some liver damage, kidney failure, and blood cancer. So it is important to rush to the hospital if you see these symptoms. How to prevent Belhaiza? You can prevent Belhaiza by not swimming in water where Belhaiza is commonly found. Make sure that drinking water is fresh by boiling it for at least one minute. You should also heat bath water for at least five minutes to 65 degrees Celsius. Now let's go to epilepsy because epi epilepsy also is common in children. This is a neurological disorder that affects the brain. It, it, if properly managed, if not properly managed, it can be dangerous. A number of people have died by having scissors in dangerous places such as near fire, water, or while working with big machine. It is caused by abnormal behavior of the nerve cells in the brain. As we have said that it affects the, play, the brain. A person with ep epilepsy may experience seizures which are known as Feats. Epilepsy can be inherited or developed due to brain injury or strokes. Let's look at the symptoms of epilepsy. Uncontrollable and violent twitching of the body and the turning of the head to one side and also temporal speech loss and uncontrollable controlled clutching of the jaws and the finger. These symptoms happen at the same time. How to prevent it? Epilepsy can be treated and controlled using medication. If the disorder is properly managed, a person can live relatively normal life. If you are suffering from epilepsy, you should avoid consuming a large amount of alcohol. Regular exercise may also help to reduce the frequency of epileptic seizures. There is 
an epilepsy association in the country which supports people living with epilepsy. Now let's go to chickenpox. It is chickenpox is a very common is very common in children and it affects the skin. It is caused by a virus. Symptoms of chickenpox are fatigue and a mild fever. You also lose appetite, meaning that you are not interested in eating. Also a skin rash. The rash consists of red, red spots which develop into yellowish blisters. The blisters burst and then dry up, leaving crusty spots, crusty spots. The rash itches quite a lot. It is spread by coming into contact with a person infected. So meaning that when you touch someone who is infected with chicken pox, you also get infected. How to prevent chicken pox? A person suffering from chicken pox should remain at home until they are completely healed. Meaning that the rash is now has now completely disappeared. Chicken pox usually clears up out at its own without treatment. The itching can also be healed using a lotion such as calamine which you can get from a clinic or a chemist. People should avoid scratching the spots. You should avoid scratching the spots and blisters as it can lead to scaring. People can immunize chicken pox against chicken pox, meaning that it can be avoided by getting an immunization, being immunized. Now let's look at measles. This is a highly contagious disease. It is also called, caused by a virus. The disease is, is spread through mucus droplets. An infected person may cough or sneeze these droplets into the air to be inhaled by others and transmit the disease into the air. Meaning that it is also what? Airborne. Infected droplets may circle on surfaces that other people then touch. These are the symptoms of measles. It's a fever, a dry cough, a runny nose, a red swollen eyes, a rash that starts from the face to the neck, spreading to the whole body, meaning the body also is covered with the rash. Let's look at how we can prevent this disease, measles. All children are vaccinated against measles. There is no treatment, meaning that if you are not vaccina vaccinated, once you get the disease, you will not be treated. Only symptoms are treated. Now, my good learners, let's look at this exercise. Here you are supposed to name the disease next to the symptom that is given. Here you are given some symptoms whereby you are supposed to name which disease is associated with these symptoms. There's a cough, has a headache, a running nose, sneezing and fever. Which disease shows these symptoms? As we have listened you are listening, my learners. Disease, a disease associated with these symptoms is the influenza. Is influenza. The child B. The child passes urine with blood in it. 
which disease is, in, is associated with these symptoms? It is Belhazer. Belhazer. The child falls down and shakes, has feet. Which disease has these symptoms? It is the epilepsy. Epilepsy. The child has a fine red, 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 a fine red skin, rash, and red eyes. This disease is the measles. Measles. And lastly, the child has a rash with itchy red with itchy red spots and blisters. This disease is the chicken pox. Chicken chicken pox. Now let's look at how some other diseases are transmitted from other people. As we have said that some diseases are transmitted through air which are airborne and some are transmitted through water which are airborne and some are transmitted by insects which are insect transmitted. Let's first look at tuberculosis which is airborne. Tuberculosis is a disease caused by a bacteria. It usually attacks the lungs and it may then affect other organs through the lungs, meaning that it first attacks the lungs and spread to the other parts of the body. It can be spread when a person who has TB sneeze, cough, speak or even sing amongst other people. The bacteria is released and carried by air, as we have said that it is airborne, to another person. It is an airborne disease. It can also be spread by sharing utensils such as spoons and dishes with an infected person. Let's look at symptoms of TB. Weight loss, meaning that you, be, you lose your weight. Extremely tiredness, you become tired. A chronic cough, which means this cough is different from that of common cold and influence, and it produces blood tinged spat sputum. There is also fever and night sweat, meaning that at night when you are sleeping, you sweat. Chest pains and loss of appetite, because when you are not interested in food, you lose appetite and even lose what? Weight. Let's look at how you can prevent being affected with tuberculosis. You have to cover your mouth, cover your mouth, your mouth, nose, when coughing or sneezing. Good ventilation. Staying in a place whereby the air, air circulates freely. Good hygiene, meaning that the place where you are staying is clean and also eat a balanced diet. Food that consists all the three food groups, which are the bodybuilding, energy giving, and the protective food. People who are suffering, people who are living with HIV are more susceptible, which means that they are easily attracted by TP, since their immunity has been weakened by the HIV virus. TP is an Optimist, opportunistic infections, meaning that it takes that opportunity of the immune system that is weak. Now let's look at malaria. This is an insect transmitted disease. It is a serious disease that kills a lot of people around the world. It is called by a par it is caused by a parasite known as plasmodium which normally spread through an infected mosquito. When the mos mosquito bites you, the infected mos mosquito bites a person, it leaves 
eat saliva and the parasites in the blood of the person as it sucks the blood. These are the symptoms of malaria. They are similar to flu. They are similar to flu, to flu in the early stages. It says you suffer from a headache, a cough, having chills, followed by fever, a fast heart rate, meaning your heart rate becomes fast. A person suffering from this disease vomit and have a diarrhea and diarrhea, meaning that it seems to be confused as if they are drunk. Let's look at ways of preventing this disease. Sleeping under a mosquito net because the mosquito net will protect you, will cover you so that the mosquito cannot come in contact with you. Wearing light colored clothes and covering your skin with long sleeves, pants and socks if you are out at night because mosquitoes are busy at night. Having walls sprayed with chemicals that kill mosquitoes at the beginning of the mosquito season, like in the summer season. Preventing the spreading of mosquitoes, preventing the spreading of mosquitoes by removing areas of stagnant water, clearing bushes, clearing bushes near areas where people live. It can be treated if diagnosed on time. Now let's look at Corella, a waterborne disease. It is caused by a bacteria found in contaminated water, dirty water. It can be contracted by drinking the contaminated water or eating food that is contaminated, food that is dead that you haven't washed it like fruits and vegetables. The water is usually contaminated by feces from a person from a person who has cholera. These are the symptoms of cholera. A severe watery diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, muscle cramps, and rapid high rate and low blood pressure. How to prevent cholera? You have to drink and use safe water, meaning clean water. Use a toilet to relieve yourself. Always wash your hands with soap and running water. Cook food and wash fruits well, meaning that when the food is cooked, the bacteria will be killed. Okay, later, my good learners, I want you to answer these questions from page 33 to page 38 on your pupils' activity books. Now, let's look at what we have learned today. Today, we are able to identify common diseases amongst children, which are influenza, common cold, measles, aprils, and belhals. We are also able to classify methods by which diseases are transmitted, such as airborne, waterborne, and insect transmission. We are also able to state some signs and symptoms of other diseases, and also describe preventative methods of the diseases. So I think my good learners, you were listening, you were able to get all what I have said. I, I have said. I think you enjoyed the lesson and may I come back to you, Nogas. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lamini, for a lovely lesson. The grade threes and the grade fours now can be able to tell uh, which diseases uh, what their friend might have or what they might have as well. A lovely lesson that was. Thank you so much. We're, hope to, we're, ho we're hoping that we'll, see, we'll be seeing you soon. Yes, I hope.
time. So. All right. Thank you so much. A lovely lesson. That was grade five and grade six. Please get closer to your screens. Up next is mathematics with, me, with teacher Nongubego Lamini. We will be right back after this. Ungababona Bashega, Abati could see in Zabayami at Sio Yekshe, Lena in Zabam Lunyen, Esven, M. Babuzi, Ipume, Din Zabe, Um, Fana Lumnan, Ulis, and Magawak, Lumkulum, as Jesus of Paman, um, God. Mampu, Gambe, Monen, Rufunzan, Zu, Leban for Bakobong, Keban for Bakobong, Gengba, Fisela Pumelela, and Biluenigu, Zabatokona, who keep a robum yam and a book fele. Mtaumbe get Chablis, a good singer Bastri, La Setua, Mkela Um and Gupa, and a good Uli, Koloma, Kolo, and Nibon, the Lengubona, Angati Noma Anga, Bonis, Wong and Muntu, Selikol. Sum Kulego, we are called the Utsugu, Pampanawa, Migunan, Gunalem, Polegang and Delayona, Espa, Banuen. Good, the Utsu, we are the Utsi, Tolo, Lelengi, the Gutaway, Tolo, Luxele, Tolo, Nanis, Kululega, Mampulu, Nagel, Kulegel, and Kulegel, and the Tula and Tafustina, Tibana, Lubumia, Malabu, Vele, Nito, Puma Glechel, and Gilong, Hamming, or Lakhu. Lakuban for Bonga Goose, the Wata, the Matiba, Nebu, Hold on the letter two Langelu, Tan for the Bungo, Jong the Sansa Bong, Labasemaka, Alu, Pale Luzab and Zan, I doubt it. Using an ATM is a simple process. You simply insert your card, punch in your PIN, and withdraw your cash. However, this simple process can open up you and your finances to some dangers. So it is very important that you proceed with caution when using the ATM and never share your PIN. When approaching the ATM, it is very important that you have your card ready, either in your hand or in your pocket, so that you do not waste time going through your belongings, either your wallet or your handbag, as this will give opportunities for thieves to act. Thirdly, put your money away immediately. Don't give anyone an opportunity to grab your cash or your card after a withdrawal. Lastly, Always take your receipt after each and every transaction. It is important that you get your sleep after every transaction because it contains crucial information about your balances and that may lead you to be a victim of Bolandela. Be cyber aware, be cyber smart. Welcome back to Home Study live on Eswatini TV. A very good afternoon to you if, you if you have just joined us, especially if you are in grade 5 and in grade 6 because right now is the time for your lesson which is mathematics. My name is Nogwazi Lamini. With me in the studio is your mathematics teacher Nongubego Lamini. How are you this afternoon, ma'am? I'm good, I'm good. And you? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Today the topic is writing decimal fractions in expanded form. Yes. What are you expecting your grade fives and your grade sixes to have learned by the end of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, dear Lena, I'm expecting you to be able to write a decimal fraction in expanded form with up to two decimal places. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And Nongu Bego, we're hoping your grade fives and your grade sixes are ready for the lesson. And of course, grade five and grade six to remind you that we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. If you can join us on those platforms, that would be lovely. And of course, to send us any questions that you might have on our WhatsApp number, you may please begin with your lesson. Thank you so much. Dear grade fives, please bring with you your grade five pupils book. Your spiker bookers, if you have one, your pupils' exercise book, your pencil, your pencil, and a rubber. 
I am going to be teaching you writing decimal fractions in expanded form because it is a way of writing numbers to show the value of each digit in a number. Expanded form makes it easier to calculate using the other mathematical operations. Dear Lena, please try to remember what we learned in the previous grades. We learned writing whole numbers in expanded form. We learned express expressing common fractions as decimal fractions. And we also learned place value up to a hundredth. Before we continue with our lesson, let us look at the new words that we are going to be using throughout the lesson. These words are very important because we are going to be using them time and time again. We are going to start with the word decimal. Decimal. A decimal is a fraction whose denominator is the power of 10 and are expressed by figures on the right of the decimal point. Dear Lena, let us look at fraction. Dear Lena, we have the word fraction. A fraction is a part, a part of a whole. We also have the tenth. The tenth is a position of the first digit to the right. Dear Lena, remember it's not the correct right to the right of the decimal point. And we also have hundredth. Hundredth is the position of the second digit to the right of the decimal point. Dear Lena, we also have a spiker because some of you has br have brought one with them. A spiker because is a, a counting frame with beads that slide on a road. It also shows the place values of, decre of digits in increasing order from once up. It also, uh, it also shows us numbers on the right of the decimal fraction or decimal point. Dear Elena, in a spike because we have beads. Beads are small objects with a hole to allow it to be threaded on a road. And the last one is the expanded form, which is the core of our lesson. Expanded form is a way of writing numbers that displays each other separately. We are going to see that as we continue with our lesson. Let us try to remember, dear Lena, that plays value place value of a digit is determined by its position in a number it is determined by the the position of the number in that a whole digit and also remember that in a number each digit has a place value the place value will give the number its value i hope you follow dear Lena. let us look at this number we have the number 653. We have the number 653. This is not how we read the number. When we read the number, we have to start from the left to the right and say 653. So now having 653, these three digits have their place values. Starting from the right to the left, we are going to start with 3. 3 is under 1. So we write a big O for the ones and five is under tens we are going to write a capital letter t for the tens remember how i have pronounced the tens because we are going to have some other different pronunciation as we continue with our lesson and the last number is six six is under hundreds Six is under 100. So this number is now easy to read. We have 653, which means that having the place values of these numbers, each number has a value. It has a value. We have three ones, which means that we have three one one one. So the value of three under ones is three. Then we have the next number, which is 
five. Five is under tens. It's under tens. When we talk about tens, we are talking about ten. So when we say five tens, it means that we have ten, 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 five of them giving us fifty, dear Lena. And the last one is under hundred. We have six under hundred. We have six under hundred, which gives us the value of six to six hundred which means that we have hundred 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 six of them giving us six hundred this shows that each number is a tenth of the value on the number on their immediate left let us continue dear Lena. our lesson is about expanded form it is our is about expanded form Let's look at the expanded form by use of a table. Here is the table, dear Elena. In my table, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, places. On the, on the center of the numbers, we can't say definitely it's the center, but in the middle, we say we have a star, and underneath the star, we have a dot. That dot stands for the decimal point. It stands for the decimal point. And to the left of the decimal point, let us say together, dear Lena, we have the ones, the tens, and the hundred, which means that we have the ones, the tens, and the hundred. I hope you're still following, dear Lena. Let us go back to the decimal point. On the right of the decimal point, we have other place values. Up to two of them, we have one, two. Those are the tenth. I hope you can see now that I'm not saying tens. I'm saying tenth. And we also have hundreds. The tenth is part of a ten, which means that here we, we have one over ten. One over ten. And under hundredth, we have one over hundred. These numbers on the right of the decimal point are not whole numbers. Please note that. The numbers on the right of the decimal point are represented in small letters. As you can see on my table, we have the small letter T and the small letter T. Unlike the whole numbers, on the left of the decimal point, we have the capital letter O and the capital letter T. T for tens, O for ones. They, this represents the decimal point. We have T, the small letter T for tenth, and small letter H for hundredth. Let us look at the number on top of the table. This is the number I'm talking about, dear Lena. We have 39.15. I hope you know, dear Lena, that when we are reading decimal numbers, the numbers on the left are whole numbers. We say 39. And the numbers after the decimal point are fractions. So we don't call them as a whole but we call them individually that is why we are going to say one five so we have 39.15 let us take this number dear lena i hope you still follow lena at home let us take this number and put it on the table we are going to start in the migli where we have the decimal point where we have the decimal point the decimal point is in the middle we have the decimal point here then to the left of the number we have the the ones we have the the ones so nine is under one so we put nine here and the next number after nine is three to the left. Then we put three because three is under 
tens, we are going to put it here. Three tens. So we have three tens and nine ones. Then we go to the right of the decimal point. On the right of the decimal point, the first digit is not ones. When we are after the decimal point, we start from the tenth. We start from the tenth, which is a fraction or a decimal number or a decimal fraction. We have tenth. So one is under tenth. This is the one I'm talking about. So we will put it under the small letter T. And then we have the next number to the right, which is five under hundredth. Five under hundred. So we put it here, dear Elena. I hope, dear Elena, you are still following. Let us now try to expand our number. Remember that we said 39.15 has four digits and it has two decimal places. Why do we say it has two decimal places? Because when we move the decimal point here, we'll move two times one, two. So it has two decimal places. Let us now, dear Lena, let us now, dear Lena, try to write the number in expanded form. We have 39.15. 39.15. Remember, dear Elena, we said the number on the left of the decimal point is under tens, and the number on the left of the, the ones is tens. Then going to the right of the decimal point, we have the tenth and the hundreds. Dear Elena, let us now try to expand the number. We are going to start from the left to the right. Remember, dear Elena, when we are adding or doing anything, we start from the right to the, to the left. But now that we are expanding, we are going to start with the bigger number. So we say that we have three. Three is under tens. So we put the three. Then we have to put a placeholder for the ones because we are concentrating on the tens. So we will put zero. Now we have three tens. Ten plus ten plus ten giving us thirty. So now we are going to add. When we are doing expansion, we use the additional sign. The next number is nine ones. So now we are concentrating on the ones. We have nine ones. Now let us put the nine ones. We have nine ones. Now we have a decimal point. We have a decimal point and we said the numbers after the decimal points are not whole numbers. So now, dear Elena, one is under tenth. One is under tenth. So one is going to be one over ten because it is under tenth. And now we move to the next number, which is five. So we are going to put the additional sign, and five is under hundredth. So, which means that five is part of a hundred. So now we have five over one hundred. Dear Lena, we have five over over hundred. We have five over we have five over one hundred. Please excuse that, dear Lena. So, dear Lena, let us continue. Now that we have the numbers like this, our concentration is on decimal fractions, not fractions. These numbers we have represented in fractions. So, dear Lena, 
Now, let us look at the numbers when we are writing them in decimal fractions. So we said we have 1 over 1 over we said we have 1 over 10. We have 1 over 10. So our 1 over 10, let us write 1 over 10. 1 over 10 is the same as 1 divided by 10. So let us try to divide. We have 10 here. We have 1 here. So, dear Lena, we are trying to change the fraction into a decimal fraction. We are going to say 10 goes how many times into 1? And our answer is 0 times. It goes 0 times into 1. It goes into 10 0 times. So we have 0 here and we have 1 here. So we have we have 10 into 1 which gives us 0. Then now because 10 cannot go into 0, we need to put a decimal point. We need to put a decimal point and then add a 0 here. Now that we have a 0, we are going to say 10 into 10, it goes 1 time. So now we have 0 0.1. Then zero, 1 times 10 will give us 10, and 10 minus 10 is 0. Now we have 1 over 10 equals to 0 0.1. And we also have 5 over 100. We have 5 over 100. Dear Lena, let us try to convert the 5 over 100 into a decimal fraction. We have 100 here and we have a 5 here. We have a 5 here. So we have 5, 5 over 100. 5 over 1, 5 over 100, which is the same as, we have a 100 here, 100 divided by 5. So, how many times does 5 go into, one, I mean, 100 go into 5? It goes 0 times. Oh, I have written bigger numbers, dear Lena. Let us try to correct that. Okay, let us write. We have 100 here. We have 5 here. Five, 100 into 5, 0 times. So now we need to do add a zero after the five to make five fifty. Before we do that, we have to put a decimal point. Now that we have a decimal point, we can put our zero. Now we have fifty. One hundred into fifty still goes zero times. So now we have another problem. 100 cannot go into 50. Let us put another zero to make it 500. To make it 500. 100 into 500, it goes five times. It goes five times. Remember, dear Elena, we have a decimal point here. So now an, our number is going to read 0 0.05. Then we say 5 times 100 will give us 500. Then we subtract 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, 5 minus 0. So we have 0 0.05. Now, dear Lena, let us go back to our expansion. We are going to start afresh. We said 3 is under tens. So we have three tens, which is 30, plus nine, which is under ones, plus. Now we have our decimal 
fractions. We said that 1 over 10 is equals to 0 0.1. So now the next number is 1. So 0, so 1 over 10 will be equals to 0 0.1 plus the next digit will be under hundreds, which is going to give us 0 0.05. Dear Lena, I hope you are still with me. Let us now, dear Lena, look at these spike abacus. This is the spike abacus showing us the decimal point, the ones, the hundreds. It also shows us the tenth and the hundreds on the right of the decimal point. Now they want us to write the number represented by the spike abacus. So we have zero tens. Mm. We also have zero ones. And we have a decimal point. We have one, two, three, four, five tens and zero hundredths. Dear Lena, because we have how many place values here? Four. Our number is going to be zero tens, zero, ones, the decimal point, how many tenths? One, two, three, four, five tenths. Five tenths. Dear Lena, this number is not correctly written. Why? Because we are only concentrating on the tenth. And the tenth has one decimal place or one place a decimal number after the the decimal point and even on the left we must also have one so our number will be zero ones because there are no tens we also have no ones we will say zero ones point five tens so the number represented on the spiker buckers will be zero point five let us look at this one in the spike abacus, all the place values have beads. We are going to start from the left to the right. How many tens do we have, dear Lena? We have one, two, three tens. We have three tens. How many ones? We have one, two, three ones. We have one ones. And now, don't forget to write the decimal point. It is very important because we are talking about decimal fractions. And the next place value are the tenths. The tenth. How many bits do we have on the tenth? Let us count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six of them, dear Len. So we have six tenths. We have six tenths. And the last place value is hundredth. How many bits do we have under hundred? We have one, two bits, which means that we have two hundredths. And our number will read as 31.62. It will read as 31.62. Dear Lena, now let us try. I hope you have your exercise book with you. Let us try to write these decimal fractions which were on the spike abacus in expanded form. The first number that we are looking at is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 will be written as we have 0 under the place value of 1 plus how many tens do a uh, tenth do we have we have 5 over 10 which is the same as 0 plus 0 0.5 dear Elena, this is how we expand the decimal fraction Again, dear Lena, let us look at this number, 706.14. Let us change this number in expanded form into a decimal fraction. 706.14. 
So we have how many hundreds? We have seven hundreds. How many tens? I don't see tens. We have zero tens. How many ones? We have six ones. And we have a decimal point. And we have how many tens? We have one tenth. And how many hundreds? We have four hundred. So this is how this number look when we have written it without expansion. Dear Elena, please, for more practice, please look at your workbooks on page 68 to 69. And also contact us on our WhatsApp number to update you on this lesson. We remember, dear Elena, we have learned how to write decimal fractions with up to two decimal places in expanded form. And that place value is important when writing numbers in expanded form. Thank you so much, dear Elena. Till we meet again, I'm saying, Bye-bye. Thank you so much, teacher Nungube Gohlamini, for your lovely lesson on writing decimal fractions in expanded form. Where we are hoping your grade fives and your grade sixes enjoyed that, and we're hoping to be seeing you soon, I'm sure. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. From ones and from twos, please get ready and get closer to your screens. Up next is your Siswati lesson with Sanelisiwe Mavimbela. We will be right back after this. Watch the brightest talent search in the land on Aswatini TV every Sunday at 5 p.m. The Spotlight. Put me on. You know what makes Christmas so special? It's that little extra. And at Spa, we have thousands of extras. We're granting thousands of Christmas wishes and giving thousands of our customers free shopping, plus thousands in Christmas savings, like Spa Extra Shelf Life Milk for only $26.99 and Kellogg's Corn Flakes for just $39.99. Spa, the home of a thousand little extras this Christmas. Sanvanan Masotla Marshall, he was most a comedian. Masotla Marshall, now we see first Bulala and Sotwan. Now I'm sure what's a spawn in a solini, in his natal pants, and we could miss. Sponsor and his pumina sombu. But drag and Nangabuka got a very safe lan. In his Nago Funaglabanya Banfilabanga seat, Tabas and Magustanganisa. Listen, I give up my fire cats and my poisa, or Fundisi, Kango, Nalabanya Banfilabanga Samos Bonisa was a good noble as Bangago, as well. Singa Bulala and Sotwan, Umang Bulad, Singam Bulad. Using an ATM is a simple process. You insert your card, punch in your PIN, and withdraw your money. However, this simple task can open you and your finances up to certain dangers if you are not careful. Always exercise caution whenever you are transacting at an ATM machine. Always use an ATM during daylight hours. Robberies are far more likely to happen during the night when fewer people surround that ATM location. However, if you have to use an ATM during the night, you need to choose a machine in a well-lit public area. Avoid using ATM located in isolated or obscured areas. Robberies are far more likely to happen in remote areas where the ATM is covered by shadows or other structures. You should avoid such environment since lesser people can witness any criminal activity taking place. Make sure that all the lights on the ATM are working. If ever you find an ATM with faulty lights or other visibly broken features, you need to avoid using that machine. Be cyber aware, be cyber smart. Transact with caution. EO.
favorite music show is back. We're bringing you the hottest music videos and live studio interviews with your favorite celebrities. We're giving you a front row seat to the latest fashion trends as well as your weekend gig guide. Join us live on social media and call in to send in your shout outs. Catch this weekend Eswatini every Friday at 5.30 p.m. live on Eswatini TV. Ngovu sele mbugeli nginze nginze mbugeli eshele ni lako lulu tanza gole kufunza usekaya i home study lika malami ngogo wa zingo gaza mini kanzi gule skati sa manchester ufunza siswa ati selibanga les kombisa nilibanga les potongo kanyena esa nilisiwe mavimbele losa vele anami eti nilinte gusagata unja nina mslasa nilisiwe Nia pila kakuli nyo kwa zingi ya chabula kubalana. Zia chabula na tikuti ulana. E, na msisho wosa na mula sisi tinshobo. Tema bito la tfola gala guleso na leso sikaba. Kunjalo. Kunjalo Upege kuti umfunzi wako. Abe afunze ni ekpele ni ngwale sifunzi. Gune nga kule ngu pege legu mfunzi. Ngi pege legu uti. Agwa ativi legu. Ata ati tinshobo. Tema bito la tfola gala guleso na guleso sikaba. Ngi nga nge ngo chanje mko meni ya miyales funvo. Ngi funa kizele legu mfunzi kuti. Si funvo selishelo si mtuka kakulu. Ngoba si lalinzi male nkulu. Kuti si sebende saganja nilu mne wazi. Nge kuti si kulu selua ati nge tifo tengulu mu. Lesi nato. Esu ati nge kuti si sebende saganja ni. Nge kuti nge tipi ta kile tambisana na leto tifo tengulu mu. Ok. Si abonga sanil siwe. Setembe kutu mfunzi sa uvele uslu msele sifundo sake. Nga pama mtu ngatala ni sifundo sako. Mfunzi genje ngoba beka butile nogo azguti ini nengu peke guwe. Nengu peke guwe kwa mfunzi nguti ekpele nguwe sifundo. Ngi peke guti ukone kuniga tikalo te mabito mfunzi e tikaba lete shugene. Mfunzi ngupeke nguti ukone kubutisa tinshobo te mabito latfolagala kuleso na kuleso sikaba. Longunye nengu peke le mfunzi nguti ukone kubala imisho. Imisho nene tinshobo te mabito lete shugene. Latfolagala kupike mfunzi latfolagala kuleso na kuleso sikaba. Na kuge mfunzi nengu peke guwe ekpele ni kwa le sifunvo lese. Mfunzi, asas kumbutane ka ngane kuti kwa chafelele li bito le skulu mangalu. Li hindi. Li bito ka mfunzi nganza so ya kona na manga kufusu lele. So nga kona kumchela kuti li bito ni magama le sikakula ngawo tinvo le tibona galago na leti ngabona gale. Mfunzi nga kolelo kuti gile sikaba le sikuso so ya kona jewena kumchela logo. Kuti li bito ni magama le sikakula ngawo tinvo le tibona galago na leti ngabona gale. Mfunzi nga kolelo mfunzi kuti so ya kona ni kuti umni ke tibona le talo kubona galago. Tam tibona le lang nato mfunzi. Litafula umunfu. La wa mabito, les kona kwa kwa bona. Na uma paka miseme lola ukona kona mfunzi nganzi kona lo kubona kwa longa kakula. Sitige libito, lipinze likakule, lo kuma bona gali mfunzi. Lo kufana nani? Lutanvu. Lutanvu asu liboni mfunzi. Umoya. Umoya asu uboni mfunzi. Lo kugu kumbutana mfunzi. Lo kunye langfuna kukumta kwa nasunga kangeni. Kulo glesi langa nenga kwa na mfla kuti. Libito, ine daki mfunzi. Daki te libito. Nguti ipi kile taki mfunzi, nga kolelo soba mbili, nguti taki, telibito timbili, sikalo, kanyi nani, ni siku. Yini ke sikalo mfunzi, sikalo. Mule ngenye libito, leba siku kaleni, kwa alo le libito. Futi le ngenye lena mfunzi, iya kutuga, mule ngenye le kutuga ago, na ngabe libito lisuga ebu njeni, liso agupi ebu njendini. Futi sikalo sikomba ini, sikaba sale libito. Shos masifuna kwa ati mfunzi kuti libito ligusipi sikaba. Mfunzi sibuka ini, sikalo sale libito. Logunye mfunzi logusaki se libito siti ini, siku, siku mfunzi. Yini ke siku, mule ngenye le salago ebitweni, uma kususwe sikalo salo libito. Siku ke mfunzi lukufunu kwa ati ngaso kuti, Asi kukugi siku, umalibito, lisuswa ebu njeni, liiswa gupi ebu njendini. Futi mfunzi, siku, ngiso ganye, le siku gete, umtonvo welibito. Na kuga mfunzi lukufuna ugwati, ngetaki telibito, siyabuye geta nje mfunzi siyakumbutani. 
Kona sita ukona gungeta luati lulu usha na mula. E, mfunzi neti kabate mabito nge kabanga uyati kumbula. Inde la lelula ke mfunzi kumbula ti kabate mabito utini uti um um lisi ilubugu. Kanja lo mfunzi nge kukoshe kuti sineti kaba e, leti sposho ngusuka kusi kaba 1 uyofiga lapa kusi kaba 8. Si kaba 1 mfunzi bunye bakona siti stalo sakona ngbani um noma um bunye ndi bakona ngbani mba. Basa kuba nesi kaba 1A ke mfunzi. Si kaba 1A, si te bunye. Bofa e bunye ndini, kuba ngbani, kuba ngbo. Si kaba 2 mfunzi, sona, e, bunye bakona, ngumu, bunye ndi, ngumi. E, si kaba 3 mfunzi, e, bunye bakona, ngubani, nguli. Gani, bunye ndi bakona ngubani, ngema. E, si kaba 4 mfunzi, bunye bakona, ngu, si, bunye ndi bakona, ngu, Di, eh, si kaba 5 mfunzi nya pangisa nguba lugu siya kwati Si kaba 5 ngubani ngu in Bese bunye ndi bakona ngu tin eh, Si kaba 6 mfunzi ngubani ngu lu Bunye ndi bakona ngubani ngu tin Bese guba ne si kaba 7 na 8 Lesi nga shuga nyisi mfunzi bunye ne bunye ndi Ngigo si ngati eh, le dikalo ngati le dikalo te si kaba 8 Dona si dipala ngupi nga se mkati ni eh, eh, Stalo gese si kaba 8 ngubani ngubu Stalo se skaba, skaba seven ngubu, bese stalo se skaba eight ngubani, ngubu. Ngetemba mfunzi, so ukumbu lili, so ulungile genyalo kutata, na luat lulusha lengu nigaloni. Asa si buga ke mfunzi kuti, ngumapi emabito la tfola gala gusi kaba, one. Si buga tinsho bote emabito la tfola gala gusi kaba, one. Si kalo ke mfunzi se skaba one, bese shito kuti ngubani, ngum, noma ngum, buunye. Bese ebu nye ndi nkona, ngaba nguba, Kube ngube, nama kube ngube, bunye ndi bakono. Lesi kaba lesi ge mfunzi siti, si kaba sebanfu. Sisho nga nge mfunzi kuti si kaba sebanfu. Sisho nge kuti, onke emabito latfola gala lapa kusi kaba wani, akomba banfu mfunzi. Akomba banfu, asasibuke tibonen. E, bunye siti, umunfu. E, bunye ndi banfu. Umfunzi. Lesinye sibone lo samsi si umfunzi. Masa niba nyendi stautini, stauti bafunzi. Sipinze siti umendi. Masa niba nyendi stauti bendi. Nye tembi ya sibona genas le stalo. Le stalo lezve le sibe ngbani, sibe ngbi. Lebe si kulma ngaso. Le sigesa kulma ngaso, sisa kulma ngetikalo. Le titola gala kusikaba wani. Mfunzi kusikaba wani sipinze stole. Ema kama la kakula tive. Atfola gala kona la kusikaba wan. E mabito ke mfunzi, lesi nga kipaula ngala mabito la kakulatifi kuti. Ava mise guba nesikalo bewona ebu nyindini. Asa sibuga na tibonelo. E umlumbi. Angege mfunzi uti wena balumbi. Ha, akulumbi. Uta uti mfunzi belumbi. So ya bona kuti kusebenda sikalo be mfunzi. E Asibuga le sinye sibonelo. Masiti, umsutu. Utautini, utauti. Besutu. Angege uti basutu mfunzi. Ngetemba ke mfunzi, uyawabona ema bito la tfola gala kusikaba one. Asishishi mbege mfunzi nyalo siyo buga. Ema, ema bito la tfola gala kusikaba one a. Ema bito la tfola gala kusikaba one a. E, Askumbutane ke mfunzi kuti sikalo se sikaba 1A. Sitite bunye, gute. Kane bunye ndini sikalo kona ngu, bo. Mfunzi. Nguma pike mabito leswa tfola la kusikaba 1A. Lushyo bole kala sitfola emabito ngo. Mwabu ya wati ni mabito ngo kuti yini mfunzi. Emabito ngo ke mfunzi, emabito le sikakula ngao, banfu. Emabito... Lesi kakula ngawo banfu. La mabite lao mfunzi, na mabesu wafoka gupe mshweni, atala nga feleba mfunzi, atala nga feleba. E, Asesu wabuge tibonelo, temba. Masi baba nyendi sita utini, bo temba. Sita gele, nasi baba nyendi sita utini, bo sita gele. Lolo nye lisobo mfunzi, siltolago, nge mabito la komba buslobo. Ema bito la komba buslobo. E, na tige tibone lo tami mfunzi. Mzala. Mzala slobo sako. Masa baba nyendu tautini. Bo mzala. Bo mzala bami ni abatanza.
eh lesinye sihlobo ngaba ngibani mfunzi koko mase baba nyendu dautsini bokoko ungathi ngetela ke nawe mfunzi ta kuphela tibonelo ngikanzi sithi nengilo ngacabanga tibonelo temabito la kakula tihlobo eh mfunzi lolunye lihlobo lesilitfola ko lemabito kusigaba 1a sitfola emabito etilwane Mtipi kile tiluane, utaubona ngalo usile tiluane, tibe ni bunye ndi bo asesbuge ke mfuzi tibonelo. Lo kwacha. Mase baba nye ndi sita usini, bo lo kwacha. Bapunyulile, sibati ngela. E, mba, e, lesinye sibono siti, ngeze. E, mase baba nye ndi sita usini, bo ngeze. Lo lunye ke mfuzi, lishobo, lumabito. Leso atfola, kona lagu sikaba 1A, sitfola emabito etinyanga temnyaga. Emabito etinyanga temnyaga. Asa sibuga tibonelo. Bimbitwane. Mas, Masa sikunuma, ngalungu nengi stauti, bo bimbitwane. Mabasa. Bo mabasa. Unga wenda logu mfunzi, ngatotonge, etinyanga temnyaga, lotati, utuyo ufiga, ekutine nguato. Mfunzi, eh, eskabeni wan a, sipinze sitwole, emabito lebolegwe uletinye tiluimi. Sipinze sitwole, emabito lebolegwe uletinye tiluimi. Ansi swati kuyendega sibolege ema, emakama uletinye tiluimi. Fana nani, nesingisi, nespunu mfunzi. Asa sibugege nati tibone lo tam. Pende. Tusuga api mfunzi, paint. Sibolegele. Sisi ge pende. Nase kusisi sebi nye ndini sita usini. Bo pende. Nase le sinye sibonelo. Sheleni. Sheleni usuga api mfunzi. Ku shiling. Sibole gile mfunzi. Nase baba ne mbo sheleni mbami nda usini. Nda usi. Bo sheleni. Nye tsemba ge mfunzi. Kuya kakela. So ya wati. Mabito la tfolakala. Kusikaba. One. Ah, so nga watluga nisa, ngiti nchobo tao. E, Lamanya mabito ke mfunze, ngifuna suwa buge, ngi mabito la tfola kala kusikaba, tu. E, as kumbutane ke skalo se skaba tu mfunze, ngu umu, um, ebunyeni, na im, imi, ebunyeni. Asa sibuge ngiti nchobo te mabito la tfola kala kusikaba tu. Mfunze, si tfola, e mabito la kakula, imi fula. Ngabe kona ini bito le mfula lo latigo wen. Mine ngati, umzimnene umtilane umkhonvo onke la mabito lawa siwatfola kusigaba 2 eh siphinze sigagule emabito etihlahla siwafake khona la kusigaba 2 ase so sithi gagule ke tihlahla umtholo umkhwakwa umnumbela nalawa mabito mfunzi siwatfola khona la kusigaba 2 Sipinze sitfole ke mfunzi emabito la kakula chani. Ngabe kukhona eni libito le kakula chani lolati kuona mfunzi. E, sine sine libito lesithi umsuka, umsingitane, umthenze. Onke la wangu mabito la kakula chani leso watfola kusigaba 2 mfunzi. Asigcinike lapho mfunzi kusigaba 2. Sipinze sitfole emabito la kakula bantu. Aya bakaza la bandu. Ava magu bakaza nge mkiba yabo. Laba yendao. Asubuge pela na tibonelo. Umkewu. Masa baba nendi. Sita utin. Imikewu. La bandu batanza guhamba. Bangatiwa kutuba pegapi. E, pinze. Sinana lilibito leliti. Umkulugutu. Na sesilie sebu nendi. Sita utin. Imikulugutu. Banda bangatipati gale. Bane buke bwenge kati. Bane mikiba. Sipinze ke sitfole mfunzi kusikaba 2 sitfole emabito la kakula titfo temtimba ngitiphi wena lo ngaqabanga lethi qala nga umphela mfunzi uthi ma utise ebinye ndini tibe seti tiqala ngabani nga imi mine ngibhale umbala imibala umgogodla imigogodla Unawe ke mfunzi ungathi ngetela usengathi ngetela mfunzi umkhaba imikhaba e dine ngikakhulu tibonelo lo ngaba nato siyatfola ke mfunzi nalamanye nje mabito lafana nani umkhuhlane umlilo onke lawa ngemabito lesi watfola kusigaba 2 asichubeke ke mfunzi sesibuke ke nyalo emabito latfolakala kusigaba 3 
Stalo ke mfunse skaba tri ngubani. Nguli mfunse. E, ebu nyeni. Kani ebu nyeni din kona ngubani. Ngu e ma. Asa sibuke ke mfunse. Din klobo te mabito le sitfola la paku skaba tri. Sitfola mfunse e mabito la kakula. Tit fote mtimba. Kotwa pela la wasa shugi le gula ole sobo ne guskaba tu. Ngoba wona asa kalisa ngali mfunse. Asa sibuke ke uti. Nguti pile tit fote mtimba leti. Li shombe. Ema shombe. Li kala. Ema kala. Funzi kuskaba tri. Si pinza si tole. Ema bito. La kakula. Ti luane. E jenga nige mfunzi. Li pubez. Ema pubez. Li tfuba. Ema tfuba. Na we mfunzi. Unga tikabangela. Le tinye tibonenu. Mfunzi. Kona lapa kuskaba tri, si pinza si tole, ema bito, la nesimo, sebu nyendi, kupela. Shosa mabito lawa, akala nje, nga ema, agwendegi, akali ngali. Njenga na libito leliti, emanga, angege mfunzi, siti limanga, asigu usho logo. Emandi, asisho kuti limandi. Emanda, asisho kuti limanda. Ulok shotinige, la mabito lawa, Ane simo sebu nyendi kupela. Ete simo sebu nye. Si watfola kona la kusika batri. Si pinzele si fole. Ema bito eti tselo mfunzi. E asasbuga tibonelo. Li kwaava. Ema kwaava. Li popo. Ema popo. Ngetema mfunzi uta ukona gunge tataka kutibonelo kona la hapo. Mfunzi kona la kusika batri. Si pinzele si fole. Ema bito lane simo sebu nye. Abe asho logo nyendi. La mabito la waga mfunzi swabita nge ma bito toka. Ane simo sebunye abe asho logo nyendi. Asasbuga tibone. Li kembu. Ema kembu. Li budo. Ema budo. Uyakbona mfunzi kusi. Li kembu. Saba nengla banfu. Ngi batlangene. Nga mkomotit. Sasba bita nge li kembu. Li budo. Askulu mge nyosi yinyo. Kuluma ngeti nyo sileti nyendi. La makbito, ane simo sebunye, abe asho lugu nyendi. Nge mabito kutoka mfunzi. Si pinzege mfunzi lapa, kona lapa kuskabatri. Kuna na libito le nkufuna kupaula ngalo. Le libito le ligu lo skabatri. Li nebu nyendi lona, lobe shugile. Le libito le li, eh, liti, li iso. Anzi spege gutige, bu nyendi pila gube ngbani. Ngu ema. Kotwa lona selifika sele shugile. Liti. Emelo. Lona lotwa chuige mfunzi le shugile. Mauli sebi nyendini. Au uti emasho. Uti emelo. Nye temba ke mfunzi. So wabambile mabito le swatfola kusika batri. Asi kubege ke mfunzi. Si buge emabito la tfola gala kusika ba fo. Si talo seska ba fo mfunzi. Ngu sis. E na ebu nyeni. Kani ebu nyendini kona. Ngu ti na. Ebu nye ndini. Asa sibuga ke tinklo bote mabito. Funzi kusika bafo sitfola titfo temtimba. Tibonelo silevu. Tilevu. Sitenze. Titenze. Sipinze sitfole emabito la kaza tiluimi. Jengani singisi. Sizulu. Siswati. Sipinze sitfole emabito la paula logutite ngemunvu. Jenga mapige mfunzi, si shlaga nipi, di shlaga nipi, si peva, di peva. Nye temba mfunzi, ukonile kugubamba logo. Nalu, lulu nye shobo li mabito, le silifola kona lapa kuskaba fo. Si tola mfunzi, e mabito nvo, e mabito nvo mfunzi, logo mabito la kakulati nvo, la susele sendwen. Asa sibuket bonelu, si valo, di valo, si susele gupi, e sendweni, vala, si kwebo. Ti kwebo. Susele gupi. Esuende ni kweba. Funzi. Sipinza sitfole. Ema bito. Lane simo. Sebu unye. Gepa abe akomba. Logu nyendi. Kona lapa kuskaba fo. Asa sibuga tibonelu. Sive. Askulu mwe mundu mwenye. Maskulu mwenye sive mfunzi. Ebu nyendi bako na sini tive. Sikele. Kune yengi lenfo. Kocha sisini. Sisi sikele. Masa gugu nyengi tika kuli sita usini. Tikele. Nye tema mfunzi, uyabona guti. Kune mabito, lane simo sebunye. Gepa, abe akomba, logu nyendi. Lesu atfola kona lapa kusikaba, fo. Na kugele mfuna kukupaula ngezikaba mfo mfunzi. Guti, kuyendega guti sikalo, sesikaba fo. Kube ngu, s, na, t. 
nangabe sikus selibito sikalisa ngangamisa asa sibuke tibonelo sandla uyabona ukuthi i akasekho sithini tandla akasekho i ubulewe sono e natono i lo qhamuka nesicalo ubulewe kwasala ngamisa e wesicu mfunzi asishishimbe mfunzi kune kutse lapho siyakhona e akhona nemabito ke mfunzi latholakala kusigaba 5 sicalo sesigaba 5 mfunzi ngubani ngu in ebunyeni kani ebunyendini ngubani ngu tin asesibuke ke mfunzi kisengakangeni kule tinhlobo angiphawule mfunzi ukuthi lon uyambona ukuthi ubhale ongafeleba lon lona ubhale ongafeleba leni ngoba uluphawu lolumele boma fomkholo bonke asibuke tibonelo imbali timbali inyoni dinyoni ingula dingula umele boma fomkholo bonke lon lomkhulu Asa sibuka tinhlobo temabito letfolakala kusigaba 5 umfundzi. Emabito etilwane siyawathola. Tibonelo ingulube tingulube, ingomo tingomo. Funzi siphinze sithole emabito munvu. Loku mabito lagagula abantu abayasuselwe kuphi esentweni. Ingijimi tingijimi. Suke kuphi ke mfundzi esentweni gijima. Ingwedli tingwedli. Suke kuphi esentweni kwedla Mfunzi siphinze sithole emabito lathatha bunyendi esigabeni 3 shothi bunyendi bakhona ngubani ngu Emma njengani ke mfunzi njengaliphi libito inkhosi masesise bunyendi insithini emakhosi indvodza nasesise ebunyendi insithini emadvodza asichubeka mfunzi emabisi buke emabito latholakala kusigaba 6 sicalo sesigaba 6 mfunzi ngu lu e ebunyeni kana ebunyendini ngobani ngu tin asa sibuka tibonelo lugodvo tingodvo lusiba tinsiba luphawu timphawu ungangeta ke mfunzi neta kakho tibonelo mfunzi kunemabito leso athola ke kusigaba 6 la mabito lawa ede bunyendi asa sobuke luvalo kute bunyendi luthandvo kute bunyendi lwati kute bunyendi lwandle nelwanga kute bunyendi ku onke la mabito lawo asesibuke ke nyalo mfunzi emabito latholakala kusigaba 7 sicalo sesigaba 7 mfunzi ngubani ngubu khumbula sigaba 7 mfunzi asihlukanisi bunye nebunyendi kuye angiphawule ke nako mfunzi kuyenteka ukuthi sicalo sale sigaba kube ngu b nangabe sicu sicalisa ngangamisa asibone sibonelo boya bovu uyambona ukuthi u wesicalo akasekho leni lesicu siqalisa ngangamisa lokunye lesingakuphawula ngesigaba 7 ukuthi kunemabito lamabili mfunzi lakulesigaba lanesicalo lesehlukile ngumaphi ke lamabito tshani tshwala lamabito lawo sofaka esigaba 7 kodwa aqalisa ngesicalo t nesicalo tshwa lesicalo lesi ke mfunzi sesibita sithi sicalo ncane sicalo ncane sesigaba 7 ngoba phike emabito leso athola kusigaba 7 ngemabito mfunzi lachaza simo lasuselwe kulamanye emabito ngekufaka sicalo bu njengamaphi ke mfunzi ukhosi lelibito leli lisuselwe ebitweni inkhosi buvila lelibito leli lisuselwe ebitweni livila Siphinze sithwale ke mfunzi emabito lasho simo lasuselwe etichasisweni emfunzi asesiwabuke phela sibuke tibonelo ukhulu sisusele esichasisweni khulu esicweni sesichasiso khulu bungcono sisusele esicweni sesichasiso ngcono mfunzi siphinze sithwale emabito lasuselwe etendweni e njenga li maphi ke mfunzi bunaka sisusele esentweni naka buthakathi sisusele kuphi esentweni thakatha bese kuba khona ke nalamanye nje emabito latholakala kusigaba 7 buhlalo buthongo so ngangeta nawe mfunzi takakho tibonelo sigaba sekugcina ke mfunzi sigaba 
Nguma pige mabitu ule swatfula gusu kaba 8. As kumbutani tikalo kutala mfunzi. Kune sikalo gu. Sa sikaba 8. Singa pinze sende sikalo. Kuh. Ne sikalo. Kuh. E sikaba ni 8 ke mfunzi. Sitwola lu shobo. Lue mabitu. Le silibita ngoguti. Nge mabitu sendo. E. Nga mabitu sendo ke mfunzi ngumapi. Kula. Kupega. Gonja. Gwaka. Na unje mabitu. Le swatfula gusu kaba. 8. Mfunz, si fike kine ngo sifundo setu. Kwa fwa ngobangu tanza kakulu mine nge afundi shole guti uvega ase yin. Asa ngu nige nangu msebendi. Nangu msebendi nge nge wane. Bala, imisho. Nala nagu, lugulanzi lako. Utwebe ele pela mfunzi li kama, leli impenvulo yako. Umbutwe kala. Bala libit, umusho. Lone, libito, sikaba 4. Bunye, leli sitwa semtimba. 2. Pala libito sikaba wan a bunyendi. Lele bolegwe uletinye tiluimi. Kwe kina mfunzi. Pala libito sikaba six. Bunye. Lele nestalo. L. Nangu gumsebe nilengu nika wana. Mfunzi wami. Lengu valilisa ngao. E, Sange pesa ke mfunzi. Sifunze nga tinshobo. Temabito. Latfola gala guleso na guleso sikaba. Sikale guso sikaba 1, sate siya sayo figa, e sikabe ni 8 mfunzi. Sipinze sa kaza kikabandi, niti kalo, tali tikaba, saniga niti bonelo. Ni abonga mfunzi, sibona ni kulukutago. Si abonga kakulu sanil siwe sifundwa sako, setembe kutu mfunzi kaya usi chabulele. Sista abonga na ifundu ende tlanze lago ngetemba. Ni abonga na mnogo wazi sita ubona ni mbele. Ok. Eh, mfunzi welbanga laga form 4, unke la kutu usonze legu mabona kutu wako. Sifundwa sako, sepa olo chiganyi na ete mbisile shacho wako siya lanze la kona manju. Mfunje, mbegiso, tola no malikingo lake, say message, senia tabana, senia bulalana, nje, uyatigu ya shakisa. Kula balaba shubete kaku, newe kuti ngalo kuti pela kushubete kaku, oke okay, kia ngakala na mwusha, kwa nzuti iprosesi le kube kaku. Kungono kuti nje kusina kusakala, uvele uku report, unga meli kutu mdaza pinza kshaya, pinza kshaya, numa pinza agrepe, abo akpinze leli. Asese saba ngishoni, asati nukisi sese kia sii leti nzimu. Ula lu togile, ula lu kile, ula lu wopile, minyango. Uti solo wende la buna, kepa bana yuze la ingeni. Niti mnebo babi, abayege le kukube tabo maki. Emakai, ngomale, labanpani. Pese basa labati nzantani, pese abasati. Ngomale, nalabo, labanpani, labase le gubo. Nabo baba tukumete. Gusha tanangulu mbulu. Hakuna kibulele. Labanda basele, au bakta bangela, matlo sui, pia kisasa kwenye njana. Angulungulu is the only solution embilwe ni emundu. Let's return my son to me. I'm going to go get him. Ow, it hurts! Hey, I haven't even touched you yet. Stop being a baby. Kandimba! Get back here! Kandimba! Kandimba! Where are you? What's with that face? You don't feel well? How did your interview go? Bad. Really bad. Well, I'd like to have a cup of coffee, please. Because I want to help you out, I Your really can't. Your father won't let you. It's just that at this time, the sales of the store don't justify hiring another person, Auntie. But if that's the issue, I could work on commission, Sarah. I already proved to you I'm a good well, salesperson. Look, I'm really sorry, but jobs don't just pop up because people need them. Maybe you should find someone who feels as lonely as you do. Someone who knows how to spoil you and likes it.
Using an ATM is a simple process. You insert your card, punch in your PIN, and withdraw your money. However, this simple task can open you and your finances up to certain dangers if you are not careful. Always exercise caution whenever you are transacting at an ATM machine. Always use an ATM during daylight hours. Robberies are far more likely to happen during the night when fewer people surround that ATM location. However, if you have to use an ATM during the night, you need to choose a machine in a well-lit public area. Avoid using ATM located in isolated or obscured areas. Robberies are far more likely to happen in remote areas where the ATM is covered by shadows or other structures. You should avoid such environment since lesser people can witness any criminal activity taking place. Make sure that all the lights on the ATM are working. If ever you find an ATM with faulty lights or other visibly broken features, you need to avoid using that machine. Be cyber aware, be cyber smart. Transact with caution. Welcome back to Home Study live on Eswatini TV. A very good afternoon to you if you have just joined us. My name is Nogwazi Lamini. Right now we are doing Form 4 Biology with Tembisile Lachwayo, who is already with me in the studio. Good afternoon, Tembisile. How are you? Afternoon, Nogwazi. And you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. I'm good too. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Today we're doing plant nutrients? Yes. Okay. What are you expecting your Form 4s to have learned by the end of this lesson? Okay. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you guys should be able to identify the cellular and tissue structure of a dicotyledonous leaf. Should also be able to describe and explain the significance of the distribution of chloroplasts, the stomata and mesophyll cells, the vascular bundle, which are the xylem and phloem, in terms of functions, and also be able to describe the adaptations of a leaf. All right, thank you so much, Tembisile, for that. From Fours, I hope you are ready for your lesson. And of course, from Fours, not only are we live on Eswatini TV, but we also are live on YouTube and Facebook. So you guys can join us on those platforms as well. And also not to forget to use our WhatsApp number that pops up on your screen from time to time to ask us any questions that you might have. Tembisile, please, you may begin with your lesson. Okay. Uh, why is it important for you? learners to learn this okay so we all know that um, we we use maize uh, as our stable food so we use maize for porridge so porridge is our stable food but but then we know that from porridge we get energy where is the energy coming from it is coming from starch and the starch we have learned that it is produced during photosynthesis in the leaves, okay? So now I want us to look at this powerful machine of a plant. Uh, how is it wired really, really, really to be able to carry out uh, this uh, magical process of producing starch for us to, to be able to, to get food? Okay, so then we are going to, um, uh, in fact, we know that uh, plants manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis. And we have learned that photosynthesis occurs mainly in the leaves. Also, we have learned that in the plant cells, we have got the chloroplast, which is the site for photosynthesis. So then we are going to look at the cellular structure, uh, tissue structure of a leaf. Okay, so we will start with the parts of a leaf. So we know that a leaf comes from a plant. So as we can see here, uh, this is our leaf. This is our leaf. So this is the stem. We know the stem. So we call this uh, the axil. And then we have got the leaf base. The leaf base is this part. And then we have got the petiole. The petiole is this structure here. 
And then we have got the mid rib, mid rib, which runs in the middle. And then we have got the margin, there is the margin of the leaf. And then we have got the tip. And also we have got a vein. So we have got so many veins in a leaf. Then we have got venules, venules uh, branch from the veins. Okay, so all these parts here are referred to as the, the leaf blade. Okay, so then now let us look at the structure of a leaf. This is a cross section. So if you cut a leaf, so then this is the structure. We have got the waxy cuticle. So the waxy cuticle, as you can see, is this layer on top. And then under the waxy cuticle, we have got the upper epidermis. And then from the upper epidermis, these are cells. These are cells. We have got also the palisade mesophyll. So it's a layer of cells also, palisade mesophyll cells. We also have the spongy mesophyll, which is a layer of cells also. We also have the lower epidermis, which is this part. And then uh, we have seen that in a leaf, we have got some veins. So the veins, the veins comprise of the xylem and the, the phloem. So the xylem and the phloem, they form the veins in the leaf. And then uh, this is the xylem. Remember the xylem is in the middle then. It is surrounded by the phloem. So this is the phloem as you can see in the diagram. We also have some air spaces, air spaces in between the cells. Okay, these are the air spaces we are talking about. We also have the stoma, which is simply an opening, an opening. And then around the stoma, we have got guard cells we have got guard cells so here we have got two guard cells around the stoma okay and then let us go further now uh, and look at the function of each structure of the leaf so we have seen that uh, in a leaf we have got the petiole what is the function of the petiole and where is it found so this one attaches the leaf to the what to the stem and it helps hold it in best position for photosynthesis. So the petiole is very, very important. So then we also uh, have the cuticle. So this is a waxy waterproof layer. So if it is a waxy waterproof layer, the function is to cut down. It cuts down water loss by evaporation so if it is a, a waxy waterproof so this means that it does not allow water to pass through okay so that is why the function is to cut down water loss by evaporation so we are going to learn about a trans a transpiration uh, which is the process whereby the leaves lose water vapor into the atmosphere okay and also uh, we talked about the epidermis so in the epidermis we have got uh, two two structures the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis so the epidermis is just uh, a layer of cells forming the surface of the leaf layer of cells forming the surface of the leaf of the leaf and then when you go further looking at the upper epidermis so this one is a single layer of cells with no chloro chloroplast and then we have got uh, okay so light goes straight through it goes straight to, through this is the epidermis upper epidermis layer and then we also have the lower epidermis layer so this one uh, it has got no thick cuticle. It has lots of tiny holes or, or pores called stomata. Okay, so then um, the stomata now, when it is one, we call it the stoma. So the stoma, it allows gases to diffuse in and out of the leaf. So this is the function of the stoma. So they are surrounded by cells which close and open 
which close and open the stomata. So around the stomata, we have got gut cells. So the stomata opens during the day. So remember, we said that for the stomata to open, uh, there must be the gut, the gut cells. So then water passes into the gut cells by osmosis, then making them to bend, thus opening the stomata. So the water here, uh, it has to, when, the, when the, the stomata opens, water has to pass into the gut cells around the stomata. So when the water is in the gut cells now, the gut cells bend. So when they bend, they open the stomata. So when the stomata is opened, now carbon dioxide can easily diffuse in. Remember, we need this carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. So it has to diffuse in so that photosynthesis can occur. Also, we have learned about oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. So also the oxygen will be able to diffuse out uh, out of the leaf through this uh, stomata so when it is open okay also water vapor also diffuses out so we are going to learn about this when we talk about transpiration okay so here we have got a diagram that shows us uh, the stomata so when the stoma uh, is opened here these are the are the guard cells that we were talking about so this is the stomata the stomata opens okay and then also uh, the stomata closes during the night so what makes the stomata to close during the night it is because water passes out of the what of the guard cells by osmosis so when the water has passed out so it results to the straightening of these guard cells they straighten moving together and closing the what the stomata pores so we can see here now the stomata is closed it's because of these guard cells they have lost water by osmo osmosis okay also uh, in some leaves, so it depends with the, the, the climate of that place. Stomata can also close during a, a hot, dry weather to help protect the plants from, from wilting. So remember, we said that uh, it is not only the gaseous exchange, but we also have water vapor, which diffuses out of the leaf. So to prevent water loss in the plant uh, during hot, dry weather, the stomata closes so that the plant cannot wilt. Okay, and then we have got a layer of a palisade mesophyll. So the palisade mesophyll comprises of the palisade mesophyll cells. This is an upper layer of elongated green cells and they contain a lot of chloroplast. So remember we said that um, in the chloroplast we have got chlorophyll which is the green pigment found in plants. So the fact that we have got lots of chloroplast in the palisade mesophyll, so this this what makes it green okay so most photosynthesis occurs here remember we said that the chloroplasts are the sites for photosynthesis so we, when we have got more chloroplasts that means we have got lots lots and lots of photosynthesis taking place and we also have the spongy mesophyll so this one is the lower layer of rounded cells with lots of air spaces yeah so this one now is different from the palisade mesophyll we said that palisade have got lots of chloroplasts but this one has got lots of air spaces why do we need the air spaces we're going to 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 to, to learn about that so they have uh, uh, chloroplast. The chloroplast are there, but not as many as possible as in the palisade mesophyll. So what's the, the function of these air spaces here? They play a role in gaseous exchange. So these air spaces, they allow diffusion to occur easily. They allow diffusion to occur easily. Remember, diffusion occurs faster in gases so that is why we need these air spaces in between which we find them in the spongy spongy mesophyll layer 
Okay, and then uh, we also talked about veins. Remember in the diagram, we said that the veins have got, in the veins there is the xylem vessel, we also have the phloem vessel. So the veins, they pass through the petiole, as we have seen the petiole, and they form a network throughout the leaf, throughout the leaf. So they consist of the vascular bundle. When we talk about the vascular bundle, we simply mean the xylem and the phloem vessel. So together they form the vascular bundle. Okay, so what's the function of the xylem? We have learned when we were looking at specialized cell that the xylem is responsible for transporting water and mineral salts from roots to to the leaves and then the phloem we have learned that it is responsible for transporting food from where from leaves to other parts of the of the plant okay also the vein they form a skeleton for the leaf a skeleton for the leaves does they support they support and prevent the leaf from curling up so we need these veins in the leaves okay then let us move on now and look at the adaptations of the leaf how is the leaf adapted to carry out all these functions that we have talked about so the first adaptation is that it is thin the leaf is thin why uh, the leaf is thin why is this important so so that carbon dioxide does not have to diffuse far far from the atmosphere to the cells of the palisade and spongy mesophyll remember we need this carbon dioxide for photosynthesis so it hasn't to diffuse a long distance so that is why the leaf is thin okay also it allows light to quickly reach the cells so the shorter the distance the quickly the the, the shorter the distance, the more the light will be able to reach the cells. Okay, so also the leaves they have a large surface area. How is this, um, how is this uh, uh, beneficial to the leaf? So it helps the leaf to absorb as much sunlight as possible as possible remember we need this sunlight for photosynthesis so this light surface uh, benefits the leaf so that it can be able to absorb more sunlight okay then also we have talked about the palisade mesophyll cells so these ones they they are pegged tightly near upper surface of the leaf okay maybe if we can go back and look at the diagram so these are the cells we are talking about they are pegged they are pegged so how is this beneficial now uh, to the to the leaf so to maximize absorption of light where its intensity is is highest okay and then we move on to the next adaptation the epidermis is transparent and it has no chloro chloroplast why uh, to let a lot of light through the inner the inner part of the of the leaf so there is nothing to block the light remember we need this light so there should be nothing that can block it so the light should uh, be able to reach the palisade cell as well as the spongy mesophyll cells okay also the stomata is found in the lower epidermis why do we find the stomata in the lower epidermis this allows the gases to diffuse in and out of the leaf easily to diffuse in and out of the leaf easily so that is why we find this tomato uh, in the lower epi epidermis okay let us move on to the next adaptation so many chloroplasts in the palisade mesophyll cells and they can move so the palisade mesophyll cells as we can see we have seen in the diagram has got many chloroplasts and these chloroplasts can move 
can you just imagine how is this beneficial to the plant so that the chloroplast can absorb as much sunlight as possible as possible so yeah this is how um uh, the presence uh, of these chloroplasts in the palisade mesophyll cells help the plants. Okay, and then uh, also we have got flu fewer chloroplasts in large intercellular air spaces between the spongy mesophyll cell. So these air spaces they allow easier gaseous exchange. So diffusion through air is much faster than diffusion from cell to cell. Remember, we said it last time. So the presence of these uh, intercellular air spaces is to help the diffusion to occur easily. So that is why we have it, okay? Also, the spongy mesophyll cells, they do not receive as much as light. So if they do not receive as much as light, so this means that they need what? Fewer chloro chloroplasts. So, Yes, they need fewer chloroplasts, okay? And then moving on to the next adaptation. So the veins containing xylem and phloem vessels are right next to the mesophyll cells. So why do we have the xylem and phloem vessel right next to the mesophyll cell? So that water can be transported easily to the cells by the xylem. Remember, we need this water for photosynthesis. So then, this xylem, they help us to bring the water uh, to the leaves. So that is why we find uh, the xylem and phloem vessel right next to the mesophyll cells. Okay, and then also food. Uh, we have talked about photosynthesis, that uh, this process produces uh, a sugar, which is uh, glucose. We have learned that the glucose is then converted to other forms of sugars, uh, for example, sucrose, fructose, to name a, f a few. So then um, we have these uh, phloem vessels right next to the mesophyll cells so that the sugars can easily be translocated translocated to other parts of the plant. So the plants need these sugars. So they have to then uh, be translocated to the other part. Okay, and then now having looked at the structure of a leaf. So now here is a question for you. Okay, we have got a diagram here which shows a vertical section of a leaf, a vertical section of a leaf. We're going to refer to the diagram. Okay, you can look uh, at the diagram, you study it, you study the diagram. Okay, let us attend the question by question. Okay, the first question says, name the tissues labeled E, F, G, and H. E, F, G, and H. Okay, so looking at E, what is E? Correct, it is the, the upper epi, epidermis, the upper epidermis. And then, what is F? What is F? Okay, F is the palisade, palisade, mesophyll, mesophyll layer, okay, or tissue. And then, going to G, this one. G, what is it? Correct. It is the spongy, the spongy mesophyll, mesophyll layer or tissue. And then H, H is the lower ap epidermis. Okay. And then let us look at the next question. Describe the functions of the parts of the leaf labeled the I and J. I and J. What is the function of I and J? This is our I. So I is the what? Is the waxy cuticle. What is the function of the waxy cuticle? It acts as a waterproof. So it cuts water loss by evaporation. Okay. And then J. What is J? J are a guard cells. Guard cells. What is the function? Okay, they do what? They open and close the stomata. The stomata. Okay, and then the next question. 
Explain how cells in the tissue labeled F and G are adapted for photosynthesis. Okay, F and G. Remember, we said that F has got what? More chloroplast, more chloroplast, so that uh, photosynthesis, eh? most photosynthesis can take place there. And then G, we have got intercellular air spaces, intercellular air spaces to allow easy easier diffusion of gases okay and then uh, having looked at the structure of a leaf we have learned that uh, um, the leaf has got uh, three uh, got layers which are the the upper epidermis the spongy mesophyll layer the palisade mesophyll layer yes we can go back to the diagram so these are the layers which are found in the leaf this is the upper epidermis palisade mesophyll spongy mesophyll lower mesophyll we have also talked about about the functions of these different structures which are found in the leaf as well as the adaptations the adaptations of a leaf how is the leaf adapted to carry out the function okay so this marks the end of today's lesson. See you next time. Thank you so much, Tamisi. A very lovely lesson. Yes, of course, we'll see you next time. We're hoping our from fours enjoyed the lesson and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. From fours, please do not go anywhere. Up next is your religious education lesson with Tulisile Vilagati. We will be right back after this. What do I do for a living? I make history. Sounds like a mystery in the present. I could ask for a present after this, if we're all present. Sometimes I make people laugh, but I'm not a comedian. You do know this is a Nickelodeon, right? It's a Swatini. We do not have cartoon networks whatsoever. Let's get back to it. I make people laugh, cough, sniff, Clear thoughts at the mention of clear thoughts. I make people smile for not long as the Nile River with poems as long as the Nile River. I make the Jordan River pour out in people's eyes with some bit of souls added. Then quickly slam those faces with a soothing line like it's okay girl, men are idiots or you'll never understand women. Quit trying bro. Then the big smiling again. What do I do for a living? I make hands clap, fingers snap, you my marvel hearts appreciate soul's love. If they are first, some flow feasts, I don't know why, to the sky, I make people fall in love with me. Yendering the corridors of wordplay, find awesomeness and healing in crippling the words we use in our daily conversations to drugs for our crippled souls. I make people fall in love with me. Yendering the corridors of wordplay, find awesomeness and healing in crippling the words we use in our daily conversations to drugs for our crippled souls. Then, after that, they'll add to that. They like the short poets. That's what I do for a living. For living the stage. Off to my hiding hole, asking the Holy Spirit to make me whole again because for the whole time out I've been hiding behind this mask cold smile. Plastered in all the spots of pain, cold makeup and backup and down sniffing tears back. In my experiences, they were snapping at my real life. What an exposure. At least I'll find closure in the fact that they don't know. They just hear the words delivered by a steady posture. Ask me what I do for a living if you ask me. I make history in my own life. I hope I'm not a mystery in my own life. I'm a poet, P-O-E-T, person of extraordinary thinking, pouring out and close tragedies, treasures. Put your tea. Bantu abage tukula mala ngase yanzi le inzabe kuti kubula la ne bantu la batanza na uzugo umbuto wa koko umshaya njani nje umuntu lo mtanza ako uze umbula le kaka 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 na ngabe ni ngasabo ni ngasolinye na lo yolo tanza na na funani pela umuntu we start lo ngege ake talutla ngote anke nele le la gule nginga ene na nibona kwe utu loko ngege uze unusite Hambane ma poison, Eslango, Tilla, Labalaba, Bugue, Sugubetana, 
emakai kutaya kumsita lo sisi ve si bambi zene mbuto we mbube sisi unga mbulani unga tibulani ni ngabulalani Welcome back to Home Study on Eswatini TV. My name is Nogwazi Lamini. A very good afternoon to you if you have just joined us. And of course, if you are in Form 4, because right now we are doing religious education with Tulisile Vilagati, who is already with me in the studio. Good afternoon, Tulisile. How are you? Good afternoon, Nogwazi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Okay. Um, today on our lesson, we're doing two miracles. Yes, healing miracles. Two okay, healing. two healing miracles. Yes. Okay, yes. what are you expecting your Form 4s to have learned by the end of this lesson? Since my, my Form 4s are aware that we are still on the ministry of Jesus, so we are looking at Jesus now having power to heal. Mm -hmm. Just in the previous lesson we were looking at, at exorcisms, so now we are moving to healing miracles. Okay. Yes. All right, Form 4s, I hope you are ready for that. Sounds like an interesting lesson. And of course, a reminder that we are live. Not only are we live on Eswatini TV, but we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. If you have any questions, please feel free to use our WhatsApp number. To Lucille, you may please begin with your lesson. Thank you very much, Nogazi. A very good afternoon, my dear Form 4s. I hope you have your learning material ready, your RSV Bible, your, your, your notebook, and your pen. The topic for the day, we are looking at healing miracles. So we will begin with the healing of the woman with the flow of blood, which is found in Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48. And then we have the healing of the leper. So I want you to take note, my dear Lena, as we go through these two healing miracles, take note of the similarities and the differences between the two. So here are the lesson objectives. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to give an account, as usual, give an account of both miracles, the healing of the woman with the flow of blood, and the healing of the leper. You should be able to explain the significance of each miracle. You should be able to explain the meaning of the symbolism used in each miracle. Be able to explain the character of Jesus in both miracles, the character of the woman in the healing of the woman with the flow of blood, and the character of the leper. And then lastly, lessons drawn from each miracle. And then let's move to the first miracle, my dear Lena, the healing of the woman with the flow of blood. Before we read the account, I'll just like to give you a brief background of the sickness, flow of blood. Medically, it's known as hemo. It's known as hemo. It's known as, it's known as hemorrhage. Sorry, it's known as hemo. Hemo. Rich. So this is a sickness where there is excessive bleeding on the woman, uh, not the normal menstrual cycle that we are used to. And according to Leviticus, according to the purification laws, this was one of the, the diseases which were considered as unclean. So patients of this sickness were considered uh, uh, unclean. As a result, they were outcast in society. So they were, they were quarantined. So here is a woman, my dear Lena, who is an outcast in society, who is not allowed to mingle with people. Uh, here he, she is seeking help from Jesus. So let's hear the story. Uh, the story is found in Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. A woman who had a, a flow of blood for 12 years, take note, for 12 years, came behind Jesus. She wouldn't approach Jesus uh, from the front because of her condition. Then she touched the, the fringe of his garment, touched the fringe, and immediately the flow ceased. Take note, my dear Lena, the flow stopped. She was healed. Then Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the multitude surround you and press upon you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive, I perceive power has gone forth from me. Then noticing that she was not hidden, she was not hidden, she came trembling. Why was she trembling? She was scared because this is not what she expected. She was only expected to receive. She was only expecting to receive healing. But now the attention that she's receiving, she was, she's scared, and she fell down before Jesus. Then she declared in the presence of all why and how she had been healed. So why she touched Jesus and how 
he, she had been immediately healed. And then this is Jesus' response or reaction. Daughter, let's take note of the way Jesus addresses her. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And then let's look at the, at the source before we move to the significance, my dear Elena. The source here shows the healing of the woman of the flow of blood of the of the flow of blood. As you can see, here is the woman. She is touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And according to the account, her flow immediately ceased. And then let's look at the significance. Why was this miracle important? This miracle is important, my dear Elena, because it demonstrates God's power over sickness. As we said when we introduced miracles, that sometimes Jesus will perform a miracle to demonstrate that God has power over every sickness. So even the incurable diseases like the, the, the hemorrhage and uh, the leprosy and all other sicknesses, God has power over them. Also, this miracle is important because it reveals Jesus' concern for the marginalized. When we introduced the gospel according to Luke, we said the gospel of Luke uh, could be characterized as the gospel of the marginalized and marginalized groups in, 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 in Jewish society included women. So Jesus has, com has concern even for women. That is why he healed the woman with the flow of blood and even to make to add on being a woman she was also among the sick which also were marginalized in Jewish society. This miracle also reveals that Jesus responds to people's faith. The fact that Jesus healed the woman because he was responding to her faith also shows that Jesus responds to people's faith. You can imagine a situation if Jesus didn't heal this woman, what would have happened to her faith? Because she had faith that if only I can touch the fringe of his garment, then my, my sickness will be healed. So Jesus was responding to the woman's faith. And also this miracle is important because it demonstrates that physical healing goes hand in hand with spiritual healing. What does this mean, my dear Elena? Jesus didn't end with healing the woman physically, but he moved on and even healing her spiritually. How spiritually? The fact that he referred to her as daughter. It means that Jesus was welcoming this woman to his kingdom. And he even moves on to say, go in peace, to, to imply that she has already received eternal peace. So more than healing her flow of blood, Jesus also healed her spiritually and accepted her in God's kingdom. And then let's look at the symbolism. We have only one symbol in the story, the number 12. The woman had been sick for 12 years. You know, my dear Elena, it's not the first time we come across the number 12. We've met it before. We said the number 12 symbolizes God's authority, wholeness, completion, and perfection as well as the fulfillment of God's purpose. The fact that this woman had been sick for 12 years, the 12th year, now she's receiving healing. So it just shows how perfect and how complete God's purpose is. And then we move to characters. We have two main characters in the account. We have Jesus and the woman. I'm sure my dear lady, at this point in time, you are familiar with how to analyze a character. So I'll just uh, read out the, the, char the character trait and then you should be able to add more examples from the account. We see in this account that Jesus is omnipotent, all-powerful. Why do we say Jesus is omnipotent? He was able to heal the woman and Luke records that this woman had had, had not been healed by anyone, which means even physicians had failed to heal her. But Jesus was supernatural. Jesus was divine. Jesus was omnipotent. He healed her. Jesus is also co uh, portrayed as compassionate. He had compassion over this woman who had suffered for so many years. Imagine 12 years being stigmatized, being ostracized by society, not allowed, not allowed to mingle with other people. But Jesus welcomed her and even called her daughter. Jesus is also non-judgmental because the, according to Jewish custom, um, someone uh, with her condition was not allowed to mingle with people publicly. But Jesus didn't judge her. Jesus didn't condemn her. Jesus didn't ask her, why are you here? Because you are not supposed to mingle with people. Instead, he healed her. And then the woman is portrayed as someone who has faith. She has faith because she had faith that if only I can touch the fringe of Jesus' garment, I will be healed. And it happened just as she believed. She's also brave. Looking at her condition, she was not allowed to be uh, among people. 
but she was brave enough to defy societal um, uh, uh, um, customs or, or barriers and she went publicly to seek for help. She's also honest because after she realized that um, uh, she wouldn't go unnoticed, she then confessed and admitted that she's the one and even declared publicly that she has touched Jesus' garment and she was now healed. And then let's look at the nature of Jesus revealed in the miracle, my dear Elena. Uh, under the nature of Jesus, we have uh, two different types uh, being revealed. We have the divine and human nature. In the miracles, we say Jesus is portrayed as both God and as both human. As a human being, as, as a divine nature in this miracle, we see that he's omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. He embodies healing. The fact that uh, the woman was able to touch the fringe of his garment and was healed, it shows that Jesus embodies power, every part, not even his body, even his clothes. They possess the power and authority. He's also omniscient, meaning all-knowing. He could tell that power had gone from him. And also, he's all-knowing because he knew that the woman had faith. That is why at the end she says, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. She knew. He knew because he's omniscient. Lastly, Jesus uh, didn't require any cleansing. Remember, we said according to Leviticus, the woman with the flow of blood was considered unclean. And anything she touches was considered unclean as well. But Jesus was touched by this woman. He didn't require any cleansing to show that he's divine. Human nature, he's human because he had physical hum conduct with the woman. He wanted to know as any human being would be curious to know who touched him. And also, he knew people wouldn't believe that the woman has been healed. Remember, this woman had been sick for 12 years. In order for Jesus to convince people that indeed she was healed, he had to declare publicly. So it's human nature. That's why he declared in front of everyone, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Then lesson shown. The first lesson and the most important lesson that we learn from this story is that faith attracts God's favor. We see in this account, my dear Lena, that the woman had faith. He, she defied all odds and went publicly and, and touched the, 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 the fringe of Jesus' garment. So as Christians, we should have faith because it attracts God's favor. Sicknesses and challenges can bring us closer to God, not to mean that it's a good thing to always run to God as a last resort. But we see in this account, my dear Lena, that after the woman's plans, after the woman's attempts had failed, she ran to Jesus. When she heard that Jesus was around, she went there and she was healed. So she was drawn closer to God due to the challenge that she had, which is a lesson to us as well, that after everything has failed, we can always uh, get closer to God. Christ can also heal without the public noticing it. It's not every miracle, my dear Elena, that will be visible to everyone. Look at this miracle. The woman was healed uh, even without people noticing it. Uh, hence Jesus had to declare publicly that he was healed. Not that he was healed after Jesus declared, but he was just trying to actually convince the people. So there are some miracles that will okay without the public noticing it. Uh, then the last lesson is sometimes we have to forget about societal barriers and seek help. Just like this woman who didn't uh, uh, was not allowed to mingle with people, but she did because she wanted help. Not to mean that we should disobey uh, the customs of the land, but sometimes in order to receive help, we should forget about what society says and seek help, if it's for a good cause, that is. And then let's move to the healing of the leper. It's quite a brief account, my dear Elena, found in Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. Again, just a brief background of the sickness, leprosy. What is leprosy? Uh, leprosy was a very dreaded disease, my dear Elena, a, 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 a skin disease. Uh, a, it, when, 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 it, when, when it attacks you, it, it normally affects the skin, causes the skin to decay. So lepers were also among the outcasts in society. And they were considered unclean. And according to Leviticus, again, uh, they were not supposed to mingle with society. So here is this leper being healed by Jesus. Let's hear what happens. While Jesus was in one of the cities, there came a man, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and besought him. So he sought for help. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Remember we said uh, uh, lepers were not supposed to mingle with people. But here is Jesus touching him. And Jesus saying, I will be clean. 
immediately the leprosy left him. Jesus charged him to tell no one, this is very key, my dear Elena, but to show himself to the priest and make an offering for his cleansing. You are going to read Leviticus chapter 14, verses 2 to 20. This is where this uh, uh, law is um, recorded, what a leper should do to cleanse himself. Reports about him spread and multitudes gathered to hear him and for healing. Remember, he had said, do not tell anyone. But the more he told people not to tell anyone, the more news about him spread. And then lastly, he withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. I hope you are noting the importance of prayer in this miracle. Here is a source again. Jesus stretching out his hand, touching the leper and healing him. As you can see in the source, my dear Lena, look how the skin looks like. So, and also we are told that when leprosy uh, um, uh, attacks you, your, your, your body becomes numb. So you lose sensitivity. You can see in this picture. And then the significance of this miracle, you will see my dear Lena, we have uh, similarities with the miracle of the healing of the woman. So we'll just use the examples. It's only the examples that will be different. So this miracle demonstrates God's power over all sicknesses, even incurable diseases like leprosy. It also demonstrates God's compassion for humanity. And this compassion is more than feeling for, but it's feeling with. That's why we have empathy. Jesus has, uh, has compassion. He feels with. So he had com compassion over this man who was suffering and he healed him. So it also demonstrates that Jesus responds to people's requests. This man requested Jesus, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. So it's important because it demonstrates that Jesus responds to people's requests. Lastly, this miracle is important because it reveals Jesus' love and not just any love, but the unconditional, the agape love. And his preparedness to ignore the law to help those in need. To a point of even risking his life sometimes. What does this mean, my dear Elena? In our syllabus, we are going to come across a topic on Jesus in conflict with the religious leaders. So this shows that Jesus was prepared to ignore the law. Here the law says you are not supposed to touch a leper. You are not you are not supposed to be in conduct with a leper but he defies that because so he's showing that he is prepared throughout his ministry to defy the law to help those in need human life is more important than keeping the law and then we look at the characters we have jesus and the leper again jesus is omnipotent he has power over sicknesses including leprosy he healed the man he's also compassionate he had compassion over this man who was suffering he's also discreet i think this is a new character trait that we didn't come across in the previous miracle he's discreet you remember my dear Lena, in the miracle where he says do not tell anyone so jesus kept his miracles private or a secret he's also prayerful because at the end of the account we are told that after healing this man he withdrew to the wilderness and pray so jesus is prayerful then we have the leper who also like the woman with the flow of blood is portrayed as someone who has faith the fact that he went to jesus and said to him lord if you will you can make me clean it shows that he has faith he had faith that only jesus can heal him he's also brave because he was not supposed to mingle again with people but he was brave enough to go where Jesus was. He heard that Jesus was in one of the cities and he went there. He's also humble. He, 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 he faced downwards and he didn't even uh, look at Jesus right on the eye. And also the fact that he didn't demand the healing. I hope you noted that, my dear Elena. He said, Lord, if you will. He didn't tell Jesus that you should heal me because you see I'm in such a condition. But he said, Lord, if you will. That is humility at its best. And then we have the nature of Jesus revealed in the miracle. The divine nature, we see that Jesus is divine because he was able to cleanse the leper, something that no ordinary man could do. He also touched the leper and was not defiled. As we said, my dear, and according to the purification laws in, in Leviticus, uh, uh, the Jews were not supposed to come into contact with lepers because they, 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 should, they can also contaminate the disease. So then Jesus was not defiled. If he didn't even require any cleansing after touching the leper to show that he's divine. He also asked the men not to tell anyone. That's a divine nature because 
uh, the, the things of the kingdom of God are divine. Then as a human being, he asked the leper to show himself to priest. So as a human being, Jesus obeyed the law. The law of Moses required that they go and make uh, these sacrifices. As I said that you'll read Leviticus 14 verses 2 to 20. Uh, it's detailed. He also asked the leper to make an offering. Uh, it's also in Leviticus 14 verses 2 to 20. So Jesus was not against the Jewish laws. And then the lessons that we draw from the healing of the leper, we learn that God honors the humble. God honors the humble. So the lesson is we should humble ourselves when we come before Christ. Look at the leper who faced downwards. Look at the leper who, did, who didn't demand healing, but he asked if it was Jesus' will to heal him. So we should be humble as well. We should make our requests or desires known to God. Just like the leper, we shouldn't assume that God knows that we are sick or that we require something, but we should make them known, just like the leper who made his request known and he was granted what he wanted. We should have faith in God. This is very important, my dear Elena. Faith is what made the, the leper to receive healing. He had faith that if I go to Jesus and ask for healing, I will be healed. And then lastly, we should be compassionate and help those in need. Just like Jesus who, who demonstrated his com compassion here by helping this man who was in need. He even says, I will be clean. So he shows that he is indeed compassionate. And then my dear Lena, let's move to the assessment. Let's see how far we've been following. I have um, a full question here, but you'll take note that since we're discussing two miracles, our questions will, 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 will be, uh, actually will cover both miracles. The first question is knowledge. Narrate the healing of the woman with the flow of blood. But in an exam situation, you can also find narrate the healing of the woman with the, uh, narrate the healing of the leper. So you study both. Explain any three differences between the healing of the woman with the flow of blood and the healing of the leper. This is an analysis question, my dear Elena. So it requires you to know both miracles as they've been covered. So the, the key thing is first identify the point, the difference, and then identify examples from both accounts. It could be also similarities. So you can work on similarities, you can work on differences. And then the evaluation question, do you think the miracles performed today, do you think the miracles performed today are a genuine demonstration of God's power. Take note of this question. It's, it's more than evaluating if the miracles are a demonstration of God's power, but the key word is the genuine. Are they genuine? Give reasons for your answer and show you have thought about different points of view. Again, my dear Elena, as you recall, you will take your stand and then you argue then the other side. So please work on this question, my dear Elena. We have come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you benefited. Let's just uh, uh, do a recap of what was covered in the lesson. We began the lesson by looking at the healing of the woman with the flow of blood. We, we discussed the account uh, and then we moved to the healing of the leper. And then we looked at the significance of each miracle. And then we looked at characterization, the main characters being Jesus in both miracles. And then the first miracle we looked at the woman as well, then the leper. And then we looked at the nature of Jesus as revealed in both miracles, the nature of Jesus, the divine and human nature. And then we looked at the lessons that we draw or that we learn from both miracles. And then lastly, I gave you the assessment, uh, my dear. Now for next lesson, please, we are moving. Remember, we are still on the ministry of Jesus. So the, the, the last part is the restoration of life miracles. So we have two last miracles, uh, which would be the raising of Jairus' daughter. You read that. Found in Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 56. And then we have the raising of the widow's son at Nain, found in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17. And you can also read for reference the learner's book, page 53 to 54. Thank you very much, my dear Elena, for your attention. I hope you benefited a lot from today's lesson. Uh, one uh, uh, important lesson that uh, we had in our lesson today is that we must have faith in God. I do believe that you still hold that. You have faith in God because in every challenge, in every situation that you are facing right now, if you have faith in God, you will pull through. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Tuli Sele, for that and for that beautiful ending. We're hoping that Form Force enjoyed that and we'll be seeing you soon, I'm sure. Yes. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, viewers at home, that was the last lesson for the day. And that brings us to the end of the show. And we're hoping that you had a beautiful day of learning this Wednesday afternoon and are looking forward to tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, for another day of learning. And this is what your Thursday looks like. From 2 p.m. until 2.30 p.m., we have religious education for the grades 1 and 2. From 2.30 p.m. until 3 p.m., we have social studies for grades 3 and 4. From 3 p.m. until 3.30 p.m., we have English language for grades 5 and 6. From 3.30 p.m. until 4 p.m., we have mathematics for the Form 1s and the Form 2s. From 4 p.m. until 4.30 p.m., we have chemistry for the Form 4s. And of course, the last lesson for the day is mathematics for the Form 4s from 4.30 p.m. until 5 p.m. And of course, another reminder that we are live on our Facebook and our YouTube channels from 2 p.m. until 5 p.m. You guys can join us on those platforms, of course. And speaking about YouTube, do not forget to click on that subscribe button and that bell, of course, to be notified, to be notified of when we are live. And do not forget to use our WhatsApp numbers to text us any questions that you might have during the lesson the relevant lessons text us questions relevant questions please do not call us do not send us voice notes you guys keep sending me voice notes you keep calling me but i cannot answer i'd love to but i can't please text those questions that you might have from myself and the team have yourself a beautiful wednesday evening i'll see you guys 2 p.m sharp tomorrow bye